it's part of your brand. It's part of your brand. Uh-huh. Uh, like this 90s thing. Like uh, you lip syncing to a bunch of uh, 90s R&B uh-huh. or boy band type shit, you yeah. know. And it's because and it's we love it because we at least people in our age group can relate to it. Yeah. But that I've always done that too. I just want to let people know. I've always it isn't like a I'm trying to fit in with these youngsters. I've just always done that even when I was I have footage. I'll I'll send you that footage. I'm not you trying know. to attack. Yeah, but I always feel like <laughs> like what's this grown ass man doing? I'm just having fun. You, you know what I mean? Like it's a it's pretty apparent that you're just having fun. You know what's ironic though? What? So whenever whenever I make those videos, I'm I'm usually like in a weird headspace as far as like Whoa. like dude I'm I'm burnt out but I do it just to like let's uplift myself you know yeah. like let me let me uplift my myself right now mm-hmm. uh so anytime you see those videos <laughs> check on a friend you know? <laughs> check out check on a friend if you ever go if you ever see them doing a lip sync video <laughs> It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. I don't know, for the listeners out there, uh, Chris Perry's been on the show ever since, I don't know, like the dawn of time. You are our first guest. That's that's what's trippy. Mm. Like, I was thinking about that too, like, being, you you hitting me up and just being like, do you want to be, uh... I guess in our podcast, and do you want to watch a scary movie? And uh-huh. which one was uh, the what's it called? Pinocchio's Pin- Revenge. <laughs> yeah, it's you like, made us watch Pinocchio's yeah. Revenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now being here and just thinking, I'm about to give you your fucking flowers. But thinking about everything that you've done, all the people, literally, hun- would you say hundreds right now? Are you in the I'm hundreds? Probably. Not sure. I've been counted uh-huh, but in like, terms of guests. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, hundreds of people that you've talked to is fucking crazy when when I when I just sit, you know, me being a listener and being a fan of the podcast, like, mm-hmm. um, just to see all the people you've, like, connected with and you know i'm i'm in a different field but it's very similar as far as seeing different faces and ta- getting to literally working with strangers day of or whatever the case may be but seeing all that you've done is like it's really cool and kind of cr- like like i said crazy to see since i like like i remember you guys setting up in the very early stages before this freaking light was even here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's a long it's time. It's crazy, dude. dude. So I'm yeah. proud of you. I appreciate it. I know. You, yeah. I'm always going to let you know that. I Especially mean, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a huge uh, crux of this, of this podcast, man. There's so many things that we couldn't have done. You could have. Uh, I mean, you could have. It would have taken forever. I mean, bro, you could have. What you've done it with you with your photography and with your video for us in just the beginning stages for the podcast has really, in my mind and in my eyes, has uh, solidified quality. And like, I wanted, I've always wanted to be like, oh, I want this to be as quality as possible from the very beginning, so that uh, it, not only does it look good for people that come into uh, the podcast new. Because like, oh, wow, it sounds good. It looks good and all that stuff. Uh, but it keeps uh, me accountable to like uh, to stick with it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and that's the hard part, mm-hmm. like sticking Consistency, with it. man. Yeah. And like knowing that I knowing that I have like friends that have put in a, a lot of work into something that I love, like that's going to make me stick with it. Yeah. yeah and, and I don't know, like, yes, I've had so many guests on here, but nothing's going to be as uh nourishing or as fulfilling as having like an old homie come on you know and like as much as i love like having all these artists on and like meeting new people that like have extremely creative talents and all that stuff and interviewing them and get to know them there's nothing that could replace i don't know just kind of like old chemistry i feel like we're supposed to kiss right now we just (laughs) just do it right now (laughs) no it's yeah i i totally feel that and like not to put the light off me and onto you, but I'm going to do it. Like you just been, like I said, I don't know how you're doing it and I hope you're getting a rest, <laughs> but, but oh, you man. like, it's, it, it is crazy. It is crazy. It's uh thank you for like checking in. And, uh, and that means a lot coming from you because you as a, 
you doing what you've done for as long as you've done in the way that you do it understand can understand what burnout is and burnout does come with your passions because to be great at something you have to sacrifice something mm -hmm. and sometimes you're sacrificing a lot of yourself a lot of your time a lot of your rest to be good at something but where's that fine line of like yo like we got to take care of ourselves that's the one thing i think this year because like reminiscing about last year like the conversations that we were having like on the podcast of feeling the fire is like I, I i i don't think that fire in me ever dies but it definitely gets dimmer and i think mm -hmm. this year in particular has been um it's been really dim wow but i it's like i feel like i'm just like high functioning like i you know when you've done something for so long you know just how to keep moving forward mm -hmm. and i think that's what i've been doing lately like um it's when I like I'll do a shoot right, and I get I'll, I'm in it, and I'm super stoked about it, and happy about it, and like editing, I'm happy, and like I'm happy and just like stoked. As soon as that's over, it just like whoosh, goes back to being dim, wow. and almost it. I guess like the best correlation is like almost like a drug a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like you're always like chasing, like you want more and you want more, yeah. um, and I think sometimes that's. Um, the creative period and sometimes I know it's like you shouldn't force it but when you're in it and this is like your your end all be all it's like you kind of have to mm -hmm. force it you do have to trudge along it sucks because because you do a lot of portrait stuff and you used to do uh you used to do the creative chip for the listeners out there that's for your 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 action figure your toy photography you're right why you were telling me recently that that passion kind of like died down what what what, what happened so i it's funny that you, you asked because i i shot with one of my photography friends I, I did a wedding with her katrina shout out to katrina uh and we did uh we we talked and her approach to photography i i like to say that i'm a fly on the wall like but her approach is like she's a ninja and she captures things the most simplistic things in like the most beautiful ways and she said something to me where i'm gonna butcher what she said but the the vibe of it was i like to collect rather than create something something to that extent and then that just like kind of registered on what this year was what this year means to me and mm -hmm. what I need to do to make that dim flame like higher, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, so to go back to the creative chip and my personal photography or my work photography, whatever you want to fucking call it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the creative chip was always about c creating, which is what, what artists do. Yeah. It's like you create, but it always felt like I ha like I had to think of the next big thing that you know, wow. you know what's gonna what's gonna get people's mind going like what's and almost like just made it not fun anymore. So when Katrina brought up collecting, how I interpret that is like you're just collecting memories, moments. Mm. You don't have to worry about creating it, and I think that's what I was so big on way back when is just creating these shots and creating uh and i feel like most photographers can understand what i'm saying I, obviously i like to create but there is something about collecting a moment that you just can't really beat because it feels so authentic and that's why lately i love like street photography going mm -hmm. out I have no control on on anything. I have yeah. no control on what this person does, what that person does, how that how that light hits that building. I'm just collecting these moments and sometimes you collect that stuff and it just hits differently. It it brings uh an emotion that I fucking like that's that's the new chase. Mm. Since I'm lacking the drive I still have it, but yeah. like since it's more dim, I'm chasing this something that creates feeling rather than 
oh, that should look, that looks cool. And then scroll, scroll, scroll. Cause I was doing it for other people. Like I was yeah. the, the creating aspect. Like I do love those shots, but I was always thinking, what are others going to think yeah. now with like diving back to the roots of, to me, what photography is about. It's about collecting. It's about memories. It's about capturing things that are significant to people. Um, and also creating, which I'm, I'm never going to say I, I'm not going to do. I yeah. create all the time, but I like the, the perspective of a moment and staying true to a moment rather than going back to toys and Photoshopping like crazy. Uh, I just like simplicity. And if it, if it gives me an emotion and I feel it, that's all that, that's a win. That's yeah. a win for me. Like, yeah. uh, this whole number game and stuff is like, that shit will kill you. Yeah. That it, shit will kill you. Yeah. It, legitly will like kill your morale and like really hinder you so it's like if i'm only gonna get five likes on a photo it's gonna be a photo that i fucking love yeah. you know i'm not gonna spend hours on a photo for timmy over in montana to be like fire bro you're the best photographer it's like, yeah whatever it's hard because i mean even with uh the podcasting game it is a game it's like uh uh, do I want to post this reel because I think it's funny? Do I want to post this reel because I know it's going to capture attention? And like in the first five seconds, I have to get their attention. And like, if it doesn't reach amount, so X amount of likes, it's going to fucking suck. Or if I'm like, oh, I really like this conversation that I had with this individual. I'm just going to clip that and post it. And yeah. whatever happens, happens. I'm now more leaning toward that. And what I'm, what's been fueling my passion, like as of like two days ago, I don't know. We were talking about me singing and you were asking me yeah. questions like um, that I should perform more, that I should sing more. I just posted a singing video and it's not like, it's not changing the game. It's not giving me crazy numbers, but it's something that I was so proud of. It, and that, yeah, you should be. So proud. And I, I, that video alone, the dopamine and just the love that I felt for it, regardless of the numbers or the comments and all of that stuff, that gave me so much more fulfillment than so many of the reels that I've posted uh, trying to chase the numbers, trying right. to chase the clout because – and I don't know. This is the duality of being a creative. Like, where is it for myself? Is it for others? Type. Well, of that thing. that's when, like, when, when I look back and think about the last time I was here, it is that's the duality. Like uh, how we were talking off mic is, like, one period of your life you could be like, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah. The next period of your life you could be like, "Wait, what?" Mm -hmm. And I think that's it's the. It's ironic because when you're in it, it's not as fun, but it is fun too. Like, I think it, if you search for like, yeah, I don't, I like to ha ride the waves of life to figure out the next step. And like, for me, like with the toy photography, bringing some sort of analogy to that, it, it is like, that was fun for a little bit. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you go through whatever, and then it kind of directs you to a different point, And then you're like, oh, but. I love this now. Yeah. And who's to say, like, I'm going to enjoy street photography two, two years from now. Maybe I'll be like, I'm, I'm over that too. That's but, true. But right now, it does feel, I want to say, and even when I did toy photography, my, like, deep down, literally, like, you can feel it. My intention with photography is always a feeling. Mm -hmm. even with the the fucking toys yeah. like it was like how do i make cycle how, how do i make you feel bad for cyclops yeah. you know what i mean uh so but now it's just like <laughs> <laughs> how do i make you feel bad for this x-men yeah. for this mutant uh but now it's like how do i how do i capture christian in a way that i know yeah. that that's christian and that like ego is gone not to, you know, every uh, obvious firm, like, I guess, like, my ego is gone when I take the photo. Cause, like, I, I always wanted to be, like, if you were to look at my Instagram page, I, I have photos of me in some 
five percent personal life, but I want it to be about others. Yeah. I want other people to see like, dude, like that's so cool that that's me and that you captured me in this in this light, and it's authentically me, not like some, yeah, you know, like some posed yeah, shot, yeah, like even though like I'm going to pose you, but I'm going to we're gonna ease into it to where. I'm like, there you are. Like, yeah. that's who I, that's who you are when I don't have my camera in hand. Um, You're really good at what you do, and that's not just the biased. Uh, I'm sure maybe there is a conscious bias in that because I love you so much and I've known you for so long. But uh, even objectively speaking, having been uh, the subject of other photographers and like videographers. You are so good at what you do because, well, first of all, first and foremost, I love that you function solely off of emotion first, then like uh, technical technicalities afterwards, right? Right. Like you really are a photographer that feels, feels. Right. and there is, I'm sure you like, uh, there is a blend to make a, you know a really good photo of uh, emotion and technicalities, but. Uh, on top of that, you are so good at making the subject feel comfortable, you know, at really just like connecting human to human. And for that, for you to be able to capture the most candid, beautiful moments in people, you have to uh, connect with them and make them feel beautiful. And you have this talent of making other people feel fucking beautiful, dude. Well, I think, thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> you do the same with, you know, this podcast. And I think that's like, it's an everyday human practice beyond the craft is just like, how do I want to treat others? How do I want to be treated? How do I present that in a work environment? How do I present that in a relationship? How do I present that with a friendship? Uh, so, and that that goes back to like the, the ego element of photography is how like, how do I make it show that I don't want to be like, you're, you're photographing with Christopher Perry. Do you know mm -hmm. who I am? I want to be like, yo, bro, like, I worry about the same shit that you do. Let's talk about it if you want to. Yeah. And like, uh, and sometimes that don't work. Like, you can only do so much. You know, we're all onions. And I know that we're, there's so many layers to us. But um, to just show, like, to let them know that I'm trying by really having the intention of getting to know you, that's that's what I'm always going to, like try to put forth you know and I, i'm a human i have days where i'm just like more like functioning but for the most part it's like i really want to get to know you like we're yeah. here for an hour and a half like let's chop it up and take photos yeah, yeah. and i pretty i think that's apparent you know uh we recently just uh did a photo shoot for uh the shirts that i, I came out with for the podcast the baddie shirts and I, I brought along with me Jay De La Cruz and who you don't know her and uh, you uh, she didn't know you. And to see see you work in real time, how you interact with someone that you're going to uh, photograph and make them feel comfortable. Right. Right. Because, uh, you know, they, these are guests in your space uh -huh. and uh, it's part of like it's part of the job description to make that person feel comfortable and make them feel laugh and giggle and blah 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 and like the communication of like hey is it okay that I fix your hair like it's there's so many parts about it even aside from the photography just talking to the person and getting to know who they are and uh, like really genuinely right and not just because uh, you're gonna take a photo of them but because like this is another human you you obviously find other humans interesting. Right. which is part of your whole craft to see that happen in real time is fucking beautiful. Yeah. I re thank Thank you. I always <laughs> feel like, you, I always you. feel like we do like the, <laughs> we stroke at each other's ego every time, but I think it's good because it is like a, one of those things. It helps that dim light sometimes yeah. to like have those spark, those flare ups. But yeah, that I was thinking about how we were, when we started talking on this, on this podcast episode, how you were, how we brought up like, how I was talking about those five people and you're like the outsider and like, when do I interject? Mm -hmm. There was like a moment where you guys were talking. I was like, can I say something? Is it, is it, <laughs> is it okay if I say something real fast? Uh, but yeah, Jay was freaking cool. And like, it, yeah, that was a, it was a good time. I, I'm sorry. It's super hot in there. Uh, oh no, it was fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that um, you read that and it, it means a lot, dude. Do you think that's part of uh, why you were leaning toward uh your work your portrait photography or whatever you want to call it uh, <laughs> yeah um as well, opposed to the creative chip because when you're posing action figures it's not like you're asking cyclops 
uh, how are you so doing weird, like, today? The, the whole creative trip thing now, it, it is weird to me now. I don't know why. It's just like the whole like, because I just don't think people will understand it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what it's do you just mean? Like, you po- like the way we're talking about like posing action figures. Uh, but shout out to the people that do do toy photography. I miss y'all, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are, the ones that I miss. But uh, yeah, yeah, it just... What was your question? Sorry. Well, is it the human aspect of like oh. having actual live humans in your studio taking portraits of them that fulfills uh, that fulfills your your artistic needs as opposed to posing Cyclops and Wolf? <laughs> you know the the posing element I do I do like from mm-hmm. and it's it's it is so weird when I was doing toy photography it helped with my portrait photography. And when I was doing portrait photography, it helped with my toy photography. It, it, it was this cool, like, I needed to go through that phase in order to see this current state of mind with uh, photography. But with the, with the action figures, it, it, it allowed me to literally, like, mm-hmm. break them apart to, like, pose them how I wanted Without to. Without asking, the, yeah, hey, to is the, it okay? To, yeah, <laughs> to the exact, like, like pose. Uh, but with, with humans, it, it, I just, I love the psychology and the sociological aspect of us like mm-hmm. we're, we're like we're very unique creatures yeah and it it's like a it is like a dance kind of yeah. like it, it is like how do i how do we move in a way where we're just free flowing and yeah. it it is like Cause that's when you when when you forget when you forget the cameras are here. That's when everything, um, just seems to happen. And I love like I love talking to people, and as they're talking, snapping. Mm-hmm. Like I love like a simple the way the hand is. Like I just it just and I'll I'll put that in their gallery just to be like, yo, have wow. this. And I think some people will see it and be like, why the fuck is this in here? But mm-hmm. for me, it's like. It was a cool moment because when I know when I see that photo, it will bring me to the exact moment. I know what we were talking about, and that's wow. my favorite. I, that's my favorite part is looking yeah. at a photo, and no, no one else will know what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. It's almost it's very special. It's yeah. very like, wow. yeah, you can't take that away from anyone. Like, and that's a lot of my favorite photographers, and specifically like journalistic photography too, and um. It's just something it gives you it makes you feel what's the word like worthy like mm-hmm. like it just what is the word is um gives you uh I don't know what the word is but it, it makes it makes you feel special yeah it makes I mean, you feel very special I mean to just be able to hold on to that moment that only you and the person in your studio knows and they the person that you took the picture of might not even know that exact moment right but that's yours yeah. you know it's kind of uh that's how I feel about this podcast like there's uh, particular articles of clothing that I've worn for certain episodes and I look at that shirt and I'm like oh man I remember I had this conversation that's that something I, that's something I wanted to ask you about. like when you watch a certain era with it mm. can't be that bad and you're like looking at a clip or whatever a photo or whatever the case may be does it does it pull you in similar to like how i was describing you does it pull you back to that time frame that you were in that headspace that you were in uh certain yeah there's just as a it's the same thing as like the smell of a a certain sense can bring you back to the fifth grade and your, right. your fifth grade crush type of dude thing. that's why I lo- those videos of um like yeah, those nostalgia videos that are in our Instagram that always like pull out your heartstrings, like the Christmas one. It's like it's the year is two thousand and one, yeah. and it's like Frank Sinatra in the background. And you're like, what the hell? Like singing now? Uh, Dude, I go searching for that feeling Dude, constantly, man. And that's that's why, like, going back to like photos, like that is something that feeling, like it's it's very hard to describe. And I think our generation is just stuck. Not stuck, but where nostalgia is real for us. I think we really feed off nostalgia. It keeps us going. Oh, well, for, at least for me. Yeah. Like even coming up here, I was listening to uh, Whitney Houston. What, uh, what's that? Um, I don't even know. 
very much further I don't have to go where you don't yeah. follow and just to freaking hear that it just like it's just like something about that like uplifts your mood yeah you know, like um yeah it's it's crazy how how a, a song from a certain time period that reminds us of something can change the course of your day. Oh you yeah. Uh, it's we, we as a generation, like you said, we, we feed off of nostalgia. We, we, we thrive off of familiarity. That's why so many remakes right. are being made. That's why so many spinoffs are being made or prequels because we, tr we, we want to experience that feeling that the original product made us feel. Right. Right. I think from a capitalist uh, capitalism standpoint, though, yeah. I think it's like hurting us a lot. Yes, because a lot of trash spinoffs are yeah, coming out that's and the, trash sequels are that's coming out. That's like where I feel like n nostalgia gets tainted because it's like – I don't. I don't need to see Jurassic Park seven. Like no, at this point, yeah, <laughs> it's like Lee, we don't need all of this. Like it's totally fine. But there's there's still a market for it. And I think people will watch it and people yeah. will make money off of it. Yeah, but no, but uh, to go back to the nostalgic, and I think that's why does it influence your fashion too? Nostalgia. I mean, it influences your music taste, and because like right now you look like a vintage guy. I I think that's the. It is so weird, huh? Like, the '90s are back. Yeah, and it's it's to think that the '90s was 30 years ago. I I I still think 30 years ago was it was the '70s. Like, it's I still you know think I mean? 30 years ago so, was the '50s. Yeah, that's. It, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I, I'm very curious. I love I love the fashion now. I love like fashion is just so. We're in a weird phase with fashion. It's like yeah. every, it's just everything. Like there isn't, I don't know how to explain it. Every, everything works. And there's I like that. No rules. Yeah. I mean, there's some rules. Like we all know that maybe super skinny jeans ain't it anymore and like yeah. snapbacks and all that yeah, shit. And but the, 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 I always like those photos where they're like, what is it like? Oh, and there's uh, there's four, there's four of the same photo, but different. Like one sepia, or one with like, you know, like hi Michaela, or yeah. like, like someone's name, someone's name, or like... people have like a mustache drawn on their hands and they put it in front of their face like this. But yeah, th those are MySpace I photos. Love this one, like, like... Oh, that one, <laughs> flipping people off before you've even said the f word. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that word, but I can show you it. But I can show you this. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah no, uh, the fact that uh, you could, the fact that the 90s is back, like I wore a turtleneck and chain last month, uh -huh. and I received praise for it. And I was like, that's dope. You know what? I feel like your style is like, you definitely could rock. Like that classic fifties look. Looking at my chest a lot, dude. That that one <laughs> chest move. You, can, we, can, you, can we just get like a close up of that? That one. dude, you were just doing that left pectoral, and I was like, you got a strong ass heart. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm just gonna go into cardiac arrest. <laughs> no, but you can pull out. I see your style like the like. You can do the fiftieth look, and you can do the like that retro nineties look really well. Thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate it. I get yeah. in my head about my fashion choices. I can't see you in like, like the twenty two thousand nine jerk era. I can't. Fuck see, no. I can't see you like that. I tried doing that Did as a you? fat kid. Yeah, but Did no. you try to jerk too? Yeah. Did you? Really? <laughs> yeah, but um, I had to make sure I wasn't on the second floor of a house because it'd just be like, don't, 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 don't. Oh don't. my god! It was dude. very heavy footed, and it was not my thing. It was, that was me trying to assimilate socially to dude, to the cool kids in high school. That was a fun era, though. Yeah. The, miss me, miss me. Now she wanna lick me. Mm -hmm. then, yeah. New boys, yeah. New boys, cold flames. Oh, now see, now we sound old. Like. Nah, dude, we only sound old if we if we acknowledge it. And uh, yeah. it's only and we only sound old if our knees are popping. My knees are popping. My knees are popping. Yeah. Ooh, did damn! You hear that? Who actually did that? <laughs> yeah, it sounded like a water bottle. Yeah, it's because they're running. Uh. But uh, yeah, dude, uh, it's it's cool because you do kind of it's part of your brand. It's part of your brand, uh -huh. uh, like this '90s thing. Like uh, you lip syncing to a bunch of uh, '90s R&B uh -huh. or boy band type shit, you yeah. know. 
And it's because, and it's, we love it because we, at least people in our age group can relate to it. Yeah. But that, I've always done that too. I just want to let people know. I've always, it isn't like a, I'm trying to fit in with these youngsters. I've just always done that. Even when I was, I have footage. I'll, I'll send you that footage. I'm not trying to attack yeah, But I always feel like, <laughs> like, what's this grown ass man doing? I'm just having fun. You, you know what I mean? Like. It's a, it's pretty apparent that you're just having fun. You know what's ironic though? What? So whenever whenever I make those videos, I'm I'm usually like in a weird headspace as far as like Whoa. like dude I'm I'm burnt out. But I do it just to like let's uplift myself, you know? Yeah. Like let me let me uplift my myself right now. Mm-hmm. Uh so anytime you see those videos, <laughs> check on the friend. <laughs> Check out, check out my friend if you ever go, if you ever see them doing a lip sync video. <laughs> if you ever see your friend moonwalking in their apartment uh, in a Joker outfit, really checking on your friend. <laughs> it's really cool, <laughs> but he might not be doing well. That reminds me of that video of uh, that dude who's like, um, what is it? Up dog? Or he's like, <laughs> he's trying to get his friends to say, what's wrong, dog? Uh-huh. Uh, and he's like, oh, he's like, do you have any wrong dog? What's wrong, dog? Oh. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he's like, he starts crying. And it turns yeah, into that? One of those, like, meme videos. I think it's uh, cool that we're sensitive boys. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I struggle you know how, like we were talking about bikers mm. the movie yeah. as soon as i left that theater i was telling Eunice, uh bro i was like oh uh, man you know how awesome butler is like hey you're gonna have to kill me to take off that jacket when they first show austin butler leaning up against the pool no <laughs> one leans on a pool table like that there, so uh, i don't know how much research you did on that movie the um you know the photo- it's like based on a true story. Yeah. Like a photographer spent some times with a a biker gang. There is an a- that there is an actual photo of someone doing that exact pose. Really? Yeah. So that's where they got that from. Was that pose? Yeah. Or was that actual him, photos? Like, fucking just like, well, at the end of the movie, it yeah, shows uh, all those photos. Yeah, the, the the photographs of the members of the bike riders club. Right. And that's how they were posed in the movie. Yeah, dude. It, it was. That's why I love the movie even more. Cause like. I totally forgot that that was like a part of the movie, like the whole concept of a photographer following following these biker this biker gang for like a few years. I was mm-hmm. like, it was so badass. Um, it was so good. Tom Hardy was so good. Yeah, the way that he changes Tom, his voice. Yeah, he he's like it's so high. Like yeah, you're gonna yeah. Hey, you're gonna take take <laughs> over the you're gonna take over the club, right? <laughs> I can't be doing uh, I can't be taking over the club. Okay, all right. We're going to do Knives or Fists. <laughs> yeah. Knives or Fists. Dude, yeah. Um, That's good. Thanks, man. That's I don't good. positively reinforce that behavior because I'll go audition for something. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, but yeah, I, I really do love that movie. I, I would say right now that's probably one of my favorites of this year that I've seen. It's I think that and Furiosa are my top two for 2024. If you're a fan of Mad Max or the dystopian type shit uh-huh. or anything that's uh, Frank Miller – yeah, then it's a good highly, one. highly recommend. Gotcha. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, that's it's cool that that movie, uh, Bike Riders, was based off of a photographer following them around from like 1976 to yeah. 1983 or some shit. And uh, it's cool how like the girl in the movie kind of even says it, like how he influenced them throughout the year. Like when he was around, like he was a positive energy, mm-hmm. and then as soon as he left, I mean, obviously other things happened but like yeah. once he left shit just kind of went downhill yeah uh but that's always been like i've always thought of that like what would it feel like to document um something to that extent like i've always like i want to do a biker gang uh yeah. if i knew for 100 percent i was gonna be safe i'd fucking do it but i always wanted to do like a traveling circus like for for, for a year and you know like my kind of photos like behind the scenes just very like I could just picture people outside of a fucking tent, just you know, like smoking, taking a little break, getting some like cool shots. Mm-hmm. Um, Why don't I, you do that? I mean, I don't know. Like, how do you even go about that? Like, I Ring, think, Ringling Brothers, can I? Honestly, I mean, probably not Ringling Brothers. You would Brothers, have to do like but... more like uh, like those local parking lot gro- uh, circus or something, which yeah. I would want it. I feel like that would be sick because then you can capture more authenticity where I feel like Ringling Brothers would be like, Hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. Super corporate yeah. and very commercialized, right. as opposed to just a local circus, yeah. a local touring circus. 
uh, with true uh, with true carnies. Right. I think. That that's so feasible sick. for you. Uh, I yeah. think uh, I think you could do it. You would do it for like a year. So document like a, the like life of a carny. Type yeah, of like thing. just like travel. Well, realistically, like maybe just when they're in town. <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> you're know, gonna drop I, 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 everything. I have to pay some bills. But uh, if I if I was like uh, if everything was good and I mapped it out to where I could, oh, in a heartbeat, I'd be mm. like, yo, I'm gonna document these like. These clowns, literal clowns. Wow. For you. Do you not have a fear of clowns? No. Oh, okay, then you're good. Yeah, I was a clown during Fright Fest. When oh, I met that's you. right. What the yeah. fuck? Well, yeah, that would be that would and be. And then you were you were on your Austin Butler with like or James Dean with the. I just remember you, bro. If you have a fo- like that fucking trench coat, the uh, scarf, and you just like walking. Like, I used to walk around with my pea coat. Yeah, dude. A trench coat's crazy. And I, I think trench coat. Fucking clown nose. Like, <laughs> who's that cool guy? You still looked way better than I did. I t- I have to compensate for a lot, Chris. What? I have to, bro. You look exactly the same. No, I'm about thirty You're pounds buffer, heavier. Buffer though. Yeah, I get thirty pounds of muscle. No. Uh, no, I've definitely age has hit me not terribly because I'm Asian, but. Dude. It's, I have to comp in, at the time I had just recently lost weight and I was insecure. I think I'll forever be, uh, riddled with body dysmorphia. Uh, so I had to like, make sure I was looking good at work. Uh-huh. I, I, uh, I, I, Talk I, like t- I, t- yeah, I was just <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just a, just a fucking singer dancer Dude. at Six Flags. <laughs> so after the dolphin show, Fucking come see me <laughs> perform at the fucking that's, stage. That's, sing these. That, those hands right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, I obviously smoke a lot of cigarettes. Um, no, no, dude. I, I have to. You don't feel that way. I mean, you don't feel that way because you're super handsome. No. Uh, what were you going to ask? <laughs> my, 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 my anxiety said no. Oh, shit. I'm going to awkward. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I'm never going to feel good looking. I'm never, so I compensate for it. Not even, I've been compensating for me not feeling good looking for the longest time. I've been doing that for so long that it doesn't even. You don't feel like, you always feel like that? Yeah, I always feel like there's something, uh, like I have to work harder for the attention. Percentage wise, how often do you feel like that? I mean, when I'm here at home and uh, you know with Melissa, who who loves me unconditionally, then I'm whatever. My hair could be whatever. Right. My belly could be out. I'm, I ain't tripping. I could be uh, myself completely, one hundred percent. But when I'm out and about, and like I, I I do care about my outfit. I do care about my hair. I care about if I worked out that day because I want to feel right. Want to feel pumped up and like lean then i'm thinking about it i i can't put a number to it yeah percentage wise like how often or like, yeah, like how, how often would you say that you have that negative image of yourself often really yeah and then, it's crazy too uh sorry to cut you off but no, you're good like like how you said you lost all that weight during 2013 or 2012 2012 yeah and like how i've always said like that's when i met you so this is all i know so yeah. it, it is kind of like i it, like it is crazy to like think that there was a yeah fat christian <laughs> well not nothing's wrong with uh with being overweight mm. There's a lot of things wrong. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> Wait, I was gonna say like you can obviously work towards being like healthier. Yeah, uh, sensitive times. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing wrong. You're talking about like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> aesthetically. There's nothing wrong with being a little, a little yeah, thick. Yeah, but I'm, I I always root for like if you can work if you're capable of getting into shape. I'm always like yeah, go for that. Yeah, Cause, absolutely. Because especially like you want to be around longer. Like you want to be around your peeps. So. I mean, do you have uh, let's say aesthetically speaking only, do you have any body image issues or like things that – what was that? <laughs> my, <laughs> what the fuck my, are you my showing forehead, me? My forehead. What's wrong with your forehead? I just – it's my the Japanese side. I have a big forehead. And I, I, that, do I, Japanese I've, people have big foreheads? Uh, Japanese people have big foreheads or like in an in a elongated face. Uh, uh. But 
I just kind of learned to accept that shit. That's like, a good thing, right? I don't. Yeah, you want to. What, what is good and what is bad? You know, it's like I didn't, symmetry is good. And is it asymmetry is not? I mean, we're talking to like st- like Hollywood standards, right? Or like, yeah. <laughs> but like real life shit yeah. is like he's just like fuck it. Like if you feel like like anything could be pretty. What's it's your subject- biggest in- uh, aesthetic insecurity of My, yourself? Uh, it's not. I don't insecurity. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, not to say like, da, 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 da. uh, if anything, probably the forehead. But I don't, I don't really care wow. about a, it. But you have a good for you got that type of look where you could stand out with. I your just hands don't know. I pockets. remember. I'm not gonna say. I just remember a scenario. Uh, like my forehead is like has like these indentations. Uh huh. I remember someone like I'm just like walking, having a good old day, and then someone was like. What happened to your forehead? Oh, like just like that. What? And I'm just like, what? And they're like, oh, never mind. That's just how it is. And I was Damn. like, Damn. For sure. <laughs> if you want to destroy someone's ego in five seconds, yeah. that's what you would say to them. But it, stuff like that. It's like there's just stuff you can't control. I have small hands. Like Is what? that a bad thing too? I don't I don't it's to me it's like it's just stuff I notice, but it's like it is what it is. Do you even know you have small hands up until you like you compare them to another person? They don't feel well, don't like know. they're small. I don't meet people like, let me see your hands. Let me see your fucking hands. <laughs> well, it's not fast. like you pick up a hammer and you're just like, uh, oh, this would be easier if my hands were bigger. I don't know. They just, I, I feel like I could just look at them and just mm-hmm. be like, my hands are small. But it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay. Everything's okay. Nah, dude, you're you're well put together. And uh, it's crazy because you're so much older than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because when you met Jay... Uh, and uh, you you said your age, and then you found out her age. I said you were in fifth grade when she was born. I know, bro. And that you were like, "That's wild. gross." That's like I was that old. Yeah, that is. It is kind of. So wait, does that make her? Sh- was she born? She's born two thousand and two, maybe. Oh, so, so that's oh, that's the part that trips Gen me out. This like the September, like you don't you weren't alive during September eleven. Yeah, that's, that's where it's like crazy to me. Like, Whoa, that's how you gauge someone's youth. Yeah, because, you know, like, I feel like that's something that's very, like, we all were affected during that time period. Yeah. Like, all of us right now, it was, like, COVID. Like, mm-hmm. like but, yeah, You're September right. 11th was, like, we all went through that shit. We're, like, so it's weird that they didn't go through that. Yeah. Uh, but they went through COVID, which sucked, too. But then but. there's going to be some kids that, bo- that were born in 2022. Yeah, and they're, like... What the fuck is COVID, mom? Get over that shit. Yeah, what is that, Spanish flu? Yeah. <laughs> That's so old, you fucking boomer. Uh, I'm not a boomer. I was born, born in 2002. Haven't you seen my lip syncing videos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why and, did you ask me if I was okay? How come no one asked me if I was okay? Didn't you see my moonwalking Joker video? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my laugh is one of my insecurities. I'm gonna really? be fine. Yeah. Whoa. We, um, my sister and Eunice, they are, they're really good at make, doing impressions of my laugh. Go, oh. ah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you, that's how you know if I'm like if I'm having a good time where I'm like. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but if I laugh like this, <laughs> something's fucking wrong. You check on checking on your friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you definitely are the Joker. <laughs> it's hot in here. It's okay if I take this off. Yeah, oh, whatever you want to do. Can I take a little? Yeah. A minute. You can take a minute to. Is this for the viewers? The viewers, if you want to see some of his chesticles, go right on ahead. Dang, dude, are you part of the bike rider gang? Oh, you yet it up, Ugh. brother. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. It's a. Uh, what were we talking? <laughs> <laughs> we're all over the fucking place. No, bro. yeah, I think to touch in, uh, to touch on, to touch you. Uh, oh, sick. It's no, I have like my insecurities that I overcompensate for. I, I, this, and that sometimes I try to keep myself in check because so many of the, so many of the loves and passions in my life, I'm trying to balance out like, is this once again, is it for me or is it for the perception of uh, the perception of me to others? Right. Right. Like when I post a singing video, is this for me or is this because I want people to know that I can sing? When I post a podcast episode, uh, is this for is this for me? Is this for the guest or is this for like, oh, so Christian's so cool. He is a podcast. I feel like that's always going to be a, an internal struggle as creators, right? Like mm-hmm. we're always going to have that inner dialogue. Um, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know if that ever goes away. I wish I could be like, it does, but it's something, I think a lot of creative people deal with anxiety, OCD, some sort of mental yeah. trauma, uh, and the creative aspect allows them, um, to self-express. Um, so to have those thoughts, it could be anxiety or it just could be valid thoughts and yeah. then. It could it, I, it could be a bad thing. It could be a good thing because a good thing because you're just like – it's always good to ask yourself what your intentions are. It could be a bad thing because you, you could just be overanalyzing everything and be like, it's not yeah. that deep, bro. Like, it's okay. Oh, dude. Yeah, you're um, right. It's not that deep. But that reminds me of a, like perception. Like um, I remember Bobby Lee said something. Like he would go to like a coffee shop. Can I borrow this? Like, yeah. Pretend this is like a fucking fancy ass book, and he just go to a coffee shop and be like, <laughs> you know, and he does it, you know, like just just to come off like he's some sort of like prolific, yeah, guy. like, and it's like, it's not that it's deep, not, it's not that deep, bro. It's okay. like I wouldn't want to like if you're doing it because you want to meet a girl, girl, a guy, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. and you're doing that for that purpose, then you're gonna have to act like that the duration that you're together like that's not fun yeah it's not fun at all i mean are you the type of guy that you have do you ever worry about how even subconsciously about how you're standing how you're sitting how you're posture yeah because i i'm always editing so i'm like literally literally but see that's for yourself that's for self-help uh-huh self-health yeah 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 so i need to be are, I... are you talking about more like a caricature of like who, how i want to come off yeah i mean just like even then because i've noticed at a young age, maybe like high school, like early high school, even when I was still uh, chunky, I was like, Christian, don't stand like this. It looks like you have horse legs or like, don't do not do the thumbs in the pockets thing because I've seen someone else do that. And that looks so <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> like, like have you seen people just like walking like this? I <laughs> do. And <laughs> bro, there's this, there's this person. Uh, I'll go into more de details after. But there's this guy that I've seen, uh, and when I see him, he's always looking like he's in a in a movie. Mm -hmm. Like it almost feels like he thinks <clears throat> that everyone's watching. In hindsight, every time I see him, I'm always watching because uh -huh. he he'll, he he has this key, and he'll be like, <laughs> and then I'm the one who's like, okay, what's who is? So it's working. You like how he looks. Or is it doing nah, too much? It's doing too much. Oh, okay. But it's also like, I know it's like good for you, bro. Like, uh -huh. fuck, have that confidence. That's fucking tight. Because I do like that stuff. I do like people who, um, like don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in a, in a way where it doesn't hurt anyone. Like, but is he it, giving a fuck, and that's why he's doing it? And see, that's that's our fucking. Because I I know what you mean by that, and that's where our brain thinks like. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. But every time I see him, I'm like, that's what's up, dude. <laughs> like, See, okay, that's good. And that's positive. And we should stop judging judging others. And I, we should stop. <laughs> be, be kind to your neighbors. Go ahead and put your thumbs in your pockets. Because <laughs> you well, what if like, it, maybe it just works for, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then yeah, probably don't do it. But if it makes someone else feel comfortable... I'm not gonna be. Like, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> don't fucking do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, show me your thumbs. <laughs> Take them out. What are you hiding? I'm gonna say, I'm. I'm just personally don't want to do it. Right. I. I don't know. I. Here I am thinking way too hard about, <laughs> and I'm the type of guy that wants to lean up against the wall to look cool sometimes. Okay, like I think. I think I like, fright fest era. Like. Mm. Like. You know, I was just young. I think I I like I like James Dean. I I I am a huge fan of. Just yeah. like I, he was he's James fucking Dean. He's so cool. Uh so I did like the whole like lone wolf kind of like mysterious. So I think I I do time like I'd be like I'm just going to sit here by myself. But then I'm like I really want to hang out with him, but I'm going to like stay here mm -hmm. <laughs> until they're like Chris come over here. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I was like committed. I was like that looks so much fun, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna. What would James do? <laughs> what would James, what would James do in this situation? I connect with that because if I'm uh, back in the day, maybe even now, if I'm at a social gathering and I 
don't know a lot of people, I don't want to be the person to approach a group and be like, hey, wow, what are you guys laughing at? Like, me too, me too. That's so funny, me too. So I'll just like, I'll go get a drink. <laughs> are you fixing your shirt? Like, I'm just going to go get a drink. I'll get a drink. This is me. This is me not even playing around. This oh, yeah. is me actually tr- making sure my shirt doesn't hug my tummy. Chris? <laughs> I thought you were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so if I tug on a shirt, you check in on your friend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll go get a drink and I'll just like chill and I'll just like look around, listen to music I'll be on my phone until they're like uh, until people approach me. Uh-huh. I want to I want to at one point in time and maybe subconsciously now, I want to give off that energy where people come to me and I don't come to them. <laughs> You just want to feel wanted. I uh, yes, maybe that's, that's what it is. That is deep because then that can trickle down to like some hidden subconscious. Yeah. It all comes down to wanting to be wanted. We're all trying to yeah, fill in some void. I don't know. Uh, Melissa, I was having this conversation with like Melissa Otis and Jazz. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal to to say it, to just throw it out there. Um, but they, uh, what were they saying? They were saying something along the lines of like, uh, we were talking about the topic of wanting attention Mm -hmm. and I just threw it out there. I was just like, yeah. And I want attention because when I was younger, I felt like I didn't get, uh, uh, I felt like my parents loved my brother more because uh, he was the golden child. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I perform now. And that's why I try to make people laugh is because I want to, uh, get that attention that I didn't, that love and attention I didn't get as a kid. And they're like, what? the fuck like that's where it comes from and i was like yeah i thought everyone knew that uh-huh <clears throat> but i guess not everyone knows that well yeah it's like <laughs> no one will know until it, it, something's said but sometimes like because you are in your own world so obviously you're like why doesn't anyone else know this Be- mm-hmm. because no one can read minds but that yeah that's that's i'm sorry <laughs> like it's it, okay it, it working is, on it, it. <laughs> yeah it's it, it's sad because it's it's stuff that you have to unpack and try to, you know, learn how to cope with and learn how to overcome. And it just takes practice and a lot of work. Um, yeah. Do you have and a lot like of that? discussions. Uh, yeah. I, um, Not that you have to share. That's like no, a deep I, there, question. Like, I think throughout these years, these past few years, I just – really like honed in on my like my anxieties and i have like um you know like separation anxiety i think Mm -hmm. and you know stems from my parents like divorce and everything uh and as i got older i i like was able to because you know when you're young like early 20s i was like the james dean era i was like i don't nothing can Nothing hurts me. I'm yeah. fucking. I'm a fucking man. Yeah, yeah. And then you learn that James Dean was a softie, and you're like, holy wait, mate, like yeah, like this shit did really affect me. <clears throat> uh, but it was a decision that was like a healthy decision. But obviously, it's your parents, so like, it made me feel a type of way, and um, kind of like similar to you, like, like that reassurance of just like. Knowing, like, not that I say I wanted to be wanted, but, like, like more so for me, it's, like, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. That's what I, like, just to know, like, I need to hear, like, I got you kind of thing. So, um. You like uh, the words of affirmation from your homies, from your significant others, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because to me, it doesn't, it doesn't take that much just to let, like, let me know, like, like. Cause I got you, uh, but everyone's just so different. Like, uh, some people are, you know, you want to see it through action. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to see it. Some people need to see it in a different, lo- you know, way. Um, we're all just complicated. Yeah, I think we're all we're all trying to figure it out, and there's no answer. It's all, it's kind of like humans are crazy because we have emotions, and there's no true answer to be able to identify it, to be aware of like where our anger, frustrations, our happiness, our sadness comes from. <clears throat> you just have to dive deep and it comes out in like right. conversation. I'm like trying to get really good at just being aware of myself. I think in the past I used to really just try to shove things away, not mm-hmm. talk about my problems because one of my – I would always tell myself this. 
growing up was like, I don't want to be a burden. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a burden. So I would never really talk about my problems. I would never be try to be sad around anyone because I don't want to be a burden. Right. And which is now manifested into me being this people pleasing, happy, go lucky, funny guy all the time. Yeah. Which is an ego feeder because that's I'm getting attention and love from that. Filling in that void from not being loved by my parents because they love my brother more type of type of thing. You right. Know? That's heavy, bro. Cause it is. Cause I, you know, I've talked to your brother and like, I know he admires your artistic side a yeah. lot. Yeah. So, you know, it, Filipino culture too is it. Asian culture in general is very, there's so many layers to it because I know that our parents go through it too. But, you know, where they're from, it was work, 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 um, put your feelings to the side and because that was their environment. But then, you know, when you come to the state side, it's so different. So it's, it's almost, it's more leisure for Americans to like, we don't have to, like, obviously we, we have to hustle, but we don't, it isn't like survival. You're, you're not from the barrio anymore. Yeah. You're not where like the dogs are walking around, like geckos on the walls. <clears throat> like, so I think we're in this generation where we can see the perspective of that generation in hopes that they see our perspective as well. But yeah. I don't want to say it's too late, but it's, sometimes it's hard to like, get parents to see your yeah um how you see life and whatnot it's i I think it's always going to be that way right it's always going to be the whole back in my day conversation with most parents and their kids i think it's it's changing now oh yeah it's definitely changing now like if uh if you and I were to have kids, not together, but if you and I were to have, <laughs> if you and I were to have kids, I think it'd be easier for us to understand their new ideologies and their strides and the the way they, you know, even with my parents, I don't think I had to do, uh, I had to go through the conventional educational system, right? You know, um, and especially with someone like my brother, who was valedictorian and like went to uc berkeley like there was not even a question like right and i yeah there was a part of it that was part of uh obligation to do it but there's part of it that really wanted to make my dad proud and i got that yeah but i don't know where i was going with that no that's that's beautiful because it also it shows like getting that now getting the acknowledge from your dad does it feel like how you thought it was going to feel when you were desiring it? Like, do, does that make sense? Like, you wanted that, and now that you have it, does it feel like where you're like, oh yeah, that's. I didn't even realize that I wanted to finish school for that much for my dad. If I've, I had done college for so long in community college in uc davis that it was kind of just thing i'm like okay you're so close just finish it and i forgot that what i was doing it for I was like okay you're gonna get a job after this yeah i forgot how much it meant to my parents and how much it meant for me to make my dad proud up until i did wear that cap and gown right and get my name announced on stage that when i went to look for him in graduation and i saw him in the audience crying and i was crying i was just like oh that's why i was that's they reminded me like th- how big of a deal this was to me. Right, to that's make him so proud. cool. Yeah, I, <clears throat> like for me w- with like my dad, it's so. Um, I feel like I l- got really, really lucky because it never was like, let's work on this car and like. Yeah. Not to say you know, you shouldn't work on a car, but it was always this is how you need to treat someone like be kind to this person and less about career. Like it was always like, whatever you do though, hundred percent, give it your all Yeah, uh, hustle essentially. <clears throat> and where I, I, I want to make him proud, but not even from a lot. It doesn't stem from, career per se it stems from human yeah like 
what kind of human do I need to be to make wow. my dad proud? Yeah. Which I feel, I mean, isn't as stressful, like as far as like, he's not tripping over, uh, what's your, you know, what's your job? Da, 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 da. He's always been like, he's, he's always seen that I'm supposed to be an artist. Like I was doing a Jackson five performances with my neighborhood kids at, mm -hmm. at, at like eight years old, you know? So he always saw me like wanting to go down that route and always feed that side. But it was always like, how are you going to approach it yeah. as a person? And that's that's why I always think that I'm so attached to emotion and feeling because at the root of it, I'm showing you that I care about how you feel because I know that's how my dad would want me to carry myself mm -hmm. is how do I want to treat this individual yeah. rather than the whole ego. And I'm still human. I always battle with my ego, but in the back of my head at my core and you know everyone has that certain feeling that they feel like they're their default some say soul some spirit whatever that you want to call it um gut feeling but my default is always like love yeah. fuck I, you know like, <laughs> it, it's like it's, it's it, but it is it is like i care for people and I, yeah. I really, I really want to, whatever the universe God give, gave me, I want to use that to give back. And yeah, because the whole, the, I don't, yeah, I go on a full fucking tangent, <laughs> but it's cool. Long story short, I think we're both making our dads proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's truly what. Happy it is. Father's Day! <laughs> Happy, Happy Father's Day! Uh, three months later. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. I think something I've been saying in the back of my mind when I'm doing things and trying to justify certain things, just like we're always, we're all just trying to make someone proud, whether that's ourselves, whether that's our parents, whether that's our siblings or our friends, and uh, you're just you were saying you're just you're human you're trying to be human and it's so apparent you are one of my most human friends i would say that's sweet <clears throat> i've you. interacted with a lot of creatives i've interacted with a lot of egos i've been uh, with big big personalities small personalities i've interacted with like a lot of normal people that don't uh pursue anything creative and you amongst all of them are like one of the most like human to the core intact with your emotions or trying to like self reflect uh, you're yeah. Like amongst all those people, I see that a lot. Not only in just your your art, but like in your uh, everyday interactions. I think, you know, I think it goes down to self awareness, and I think I have too much self awareness, mm -hmm. which is, I always find it like sometimes it bites me in the ass because I just always overthink things. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm at that root, like at that neutral state of self awareness, I always go back to. I'm, I never want to try to make myself seem big or like when I'm, you know, like we just live in an age where even when you do a, a, a podcast, like, you know, pe people always feel like they need to like, yeah, I've got, I got this going on, got that going on, yeah. got this going on. It's so, it's fucking okay to be like, hey, it's fucking slow. Like, mm -hmm. fuck, like it's hurting my soul. Like, it's okay to feel like that. You don't always have to amp up to motherfuckers that don't really care I, I hate this but it's facts you know it's like and as a friend like i always keep it what you know I want, I want i just want people who keep it a buck with you yeah. you know what i mean like if you sucked at singing and you said you were going to pursue it i'd let you know i'd be like <laughs> bro please don't uh -huh. but you're a great singer and thank i'm you. glad that you feed that side thank you you know um and i think i, I always say it every fucking time on this podcast i think we're we are going back to that um realm of like quality again where it's gonna come back i always get scared that it's not but i do see that we're gonna we're coming back mm -hmm. to authenticity and as opposed to what do you think uh, just like the that whole like bobby lee smoke like the character oh, you know like yeah the fake it to you make it it's i i, I just want to be in a place where talent 
good people are thriving and I know it ain't always going to be like that, but there can be a period where good people and talented people are getting the flowers that they deserve. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We don't all have to, uh, make this caricature of ourselves or, uh, yeah. Or, or promote this brand that isn't us to be able to make it. Sure. It does work with the, it can work with the algorithm, but, I think it always feels best when it's your truest self. Yeah. And like art, it, I say it so many times, art is our individuality. And if we are sacrificing our individuality, then it's no longer art. And uh, what what are we trying to put out there? What are we trying to make a living well, off of, right? And that what, what happens too is you put out the art that you like and not to like anything like Photoshop, like, AI shit, photography, whatever it is that you want, you're going to draw that kind of energy. Whatever you put out, you're going to receive. That's mm -hmm. how I think the universe works. Like if I'm a douche to everyone, I'm probably not going to be hanging out with a lot of people. Therefore, yeah. like that, that's something to say about myself, right? But if I'm putting art that I like, that I create, capture, collect, whatever you want to call it, people who enjoy that kind of art. I, I want to be around those kind of people because we get it. Yeah. Like we, I like you can't force just because someone else has a camera yeah. and I have a camera that we're going to gel just like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's sometimes the, like the era that we are like, you know, I see these Instagram meetups and all that. It, it, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond can we get along? Do you see my vision? Do I see your vision? Do we co like? Can we coexist in the, in the same room and gel well? Our ego is going to get in the way. There's just so many factors to it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You could you could be the dopest singer, but if you're a piece of shit, then no one's going to want to work in the studio with you. Right. right. Um. I had a. I had this guy Yacy on. Uh, I I told you about him. I asked. Uh, I was asking you like what kind of questions I could oh, ask yeah, yeah. him, but he was, he said this thing, this dope thing. He says, there's photographers and there's dudes with cameras. Oh yeah. There's, and that makes sense. And that's applicable in so many different facets. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I like to consider myself a podcaster, but there could also be people with mics. Yeah. Well, that was a thing. <laughs> like some, um, I don't know if you have – when I'm not around creative people or people, I get very just to myself. Like if I'm around a lot of techies, like just people who are in tech and I'm over here like, but what the fuck does this photo say to you? Like, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> like I just feel like in my shell, you know. But when I'm around other people, uh, it fucking – it just feels great. Yeah. But, and then you, when I do meet people who aren't, aren't in my world and as far as like artistically and we have conversations and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I had a camera, I was trying to do stuff too, like take photos. And I'm, it's like, thank you for communicating that with me. Yeah. I uh, like to, for us to talk, but it also kind of feels like, like, oh, like it, it, it goes deep, like it. It isn't deep, but it is kind of deep. Like it goes mm -hmm. deeper than just like, oh, we both have a Canon R or whatever. It's like, no, but like the way I see the world isn't like, I'm just like, no, it's like, I really fucking, and I think every photographer feels that. And I think it's beautiful. And that's mm -hmm. where I go back. It goes back to like art being subjective. Like someone may feel that too, but you know, I see their stuff and I may not be a huge fan, but if their heart's there, yeah, we don't click on stylistically but we click on fucking yeah. here and that's where i'm like i want to be around you like because yeah. you have that fire uh because i've met cat bro i met i did this one shoot <laughs> this dude with like had Ed, that edgar haircut maybe like 16 years old right uh -huh. i did a shoot what's an edgar haircut you know like those like a, a gen know. z haircut yeah, where they cover like their hairline like, completely yeah i don't know how to explain gotcha it. yeah i know what I, you're talking about and i just remember him he like he saw that I was like photographing this event, so I'm like photographing da 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 da, taps me on the shoulder, and he he's there. I think he was there just to like film. I don't know what why he was there. 
he was filming. He like tapped me on my shoulder. I thought we were just gonna talk shop real fast. Like I, was, yeah. I always love talking to the, like the young cats. Like, dude, that's like. He's like, come over here, dude. You should really like shoot from no. this angle. It's there's a lot more depth. And then my ego, I didn't. I my ego, my internal dialogue was like, you don't even know, bro. <sighs> you don't even know. But. Oh. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to be that guy. So I was just like, for sure, dude, thank you. Like, oh, that's what's up. Uh, you're a good guy. But it was just definitely like, yeah. It was, oh, man, that makes me so, yeah. that makes me secondhand angry. I would have just, it, yeah, it was, it was it, spat on his camera. But I remember being his, the thing is, I remember being his age and looking at people who are now my age and being like, look at that old head, like yeah. thinking he knows. But you didn't go but to a certain I, extent. But of... then I would see their work and I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. fucking better. But uh, but me now, like I'm just, I'm confident in my craft that much that I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, you don't, you, you, don't really, you really don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, as you should be, you've been, you've been in this game a long time. And for someone's ego to be so so inflated to be able to like try to big bro you yeah and he wasn't trying to big bro anyone well also maybe he thought i was younger so i was like thanks dude, uh, dude because yeah, you're so I'm young all, yeah i'm only 17 <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah i've just got like all these tattoos last year when i was 16 it's, it's whatever dude yeah, uh dude yeah it's probably because of that he, he thought you were a young cat <laughs> yeah man like uh it's kind of like going to the gym if i see someone uh doing squats in a poor form i'm gonna be like uh you could you're not you're not getting the range of motion right. you're not gonna you're fucking you're not hurting gonna get, yourself uh yeah that's detrimental and you're wasting time yeah. i'm not gonna go up to them and be like you do it this way i could you though with a like an approach like like hey bro like because because there is like somewhat of a difference mm-hmm. he could that person could hurt themselves if it's that <laughs> if i see that you know the barbells up against their throat. <laughs> Be like, maybe uh, you shouldn't put four plates on each side. Gotcha. Okay. When you're 120 pounds, you right. know, uh, stuff like that. But if I, if I see uh, a a girl just squatting just a little bit, and not the full range right. of motion, right. I'm not gonna approach her because first that's creepy. Yeah. And then second of all, like I, it's not in my. It's I got. Not in I, my got place. I got things to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's uh That's. One second. That's what I. It's it's I'm also weird with giving criticism when it's not asked for. If it's asked yeah. for, and I and I preface like, okay, yeah, uh, like, if you want constructive criticism, but yeah, and that's something that like it's all about the approach of it too. Yeah, like I I don't like this fucking energy where like like people are soft and they you know I always do believe you try to look for the good first and then state what you would do differently. Mm-hmm. But the whole like fucking like fuck dude that fucking sucked like. Mm-hmm. Just take this criticism as is. It's like this is not fucking cr- constructive at all. No, I don't no, even no. want to fucking talk to you anymore. Yeah, some You're people like, are assholes like that though. Yeah. So, and that, yeah, there's this. There's an etiquette with it. That's why I like ego. getting criticisms from like my homies who are going to be truthful with me and yeah. no quality. Yeah, because I only surround myself with quality homies. Well, that's the hard part. Now, quality is based off you know so much more than just your talent. It's yeah. How many followers? Like, who are you? You only have a fucking thousand followers. Like, mm-hmm. who are you to tell me I'm a good or not? It's like, okay, yeah, I, I'm not even gonna. The fact that you even brought that up, I'm not even gonna. Anyone that brings try. up numbers and followers <laughs> and stuff like that, then uh, your your mind's in a different place. Right, your mind is in a completely different place. Yeah, that could be a, a dictator of some form of success, depending. But what's your definition of success? Well, like viral now, I feel like it's losing like. Viral does nothing, dude. It does. It really does. There's nothing small, for... little, tiny victories. There, it, there are. I'll, 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 you'll get a lot more positive comments probably. Mm-hmm. And if if there is someone who's in, uh, you know, like a business that does see it, and then they're like, yeah, for sure. But for the most part, we would have be, be having so many millionaires just fucking chilling, like young yeah. millionaires. Yeah. You know, uh, it could. Yeah, a viral video can only do so much. You might be able to get paid a little bit off of it, but. In my experience, uh, I just uh, I had a um, a TikTok video uh, with Tyler Lauren us talking about like English words that Filipinos love to say, and that shit hit it. And and I'm not gonna downplay it. I'm proud that yeah. but it hit a million views on TikTok. Yeah, but has my life changed? <laughs> no, you see, that's it is it is dope to be proud of it because that is. But if you were starting to walk like 
Chris, give me water. It's downstairs. <laughs> I'd be like, bro, what the fuck? Hey, you. Yeah, fucking peasant. <laughs> I know. 246 <laughs> views on your TikTok? <laughs> fuck you, dude. Fucking. I'm just gonna smoke here. <laughs> fucking get me a fucking. Uh, an agua fresca with a side of paella. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, I'm not going to act like that at all. But, it, it, yeah. it's uh, What's your definition of success? I think uh, the the video that I posted of me singing that got 63 likes as opposed to this TikTok video that got a million views. The singing video like brings me more fulfillment objectively. Right. I guess subjectively. T- yeah. But. Yeah. That's what it is. This was a this was a good conversation. Yeah, we were all over the place. Are you ready for an improv scene? Oh shit! You forgot that we gonna do that. Uh oh, is that the this anxiety whole thing was improv? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, you remember how it goes. And, yeah. uh, the scene could be based off of anything and everything having to do with today's episode, or it could be inspired off of nothing at all. Uh, did you want to start the scene? Or you want me to start the scene? I'll start the scene. You'll start it? Okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, baddies. Can't be that bad. Hey. Hey. Is it bright in here or what? It's fucking bright, might I tell ya. You have any... How's your stall over there? My stall? Yeah. It's good. I forgot to flush. Yeah. How's your stall? It's doing all right, man. Yeah, it's, uh... But I'm gonna... I'm just gonna wipe real quick. Okay. I'm out of toilet paper. Uh-huh. Can you... Hand it to me. Can you have You'd some? have to fucking kill me for my toilet paper. That's fine. I'll just not wipe then. All right. So where do we go? Do you want to be part of this gang? I do want to be a part of this gang. Then if I'm not going to give you no fucking toilet paper. Okay. What are you going to wipe with? How down are you? Get that right hand up and do what you must do. You want me to wipe it with my bare fingers? With my bare fingers? This guy. Who are you talking to? How many people are in that stall with you? I thought you want to ride with us. I do. I want to be part of the now legacy. Now, let me see that riders. right hand. Let me see those eyes squint. And let me see what you need to do. You want me to wipe my bare ass with my bare hands? You ask me one more motherfucking question? Then I'm not part of the gang. Okay. I challenge you. Okay. To what? Fists or knives? <laughs> uh, you should say that to me, actually. I mean, like... <laughs> you, <laughs> you gotta fucking challenge me? Yeah, for, I wanna be the leader of the Legacy Honey Riders. Tom is gonna challenge Butler Austin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brass knucks. Brass knucks. <laughs> dog chains. Dog, dog chains. Two ice, two ice cubes. What does that mean? Listen here. Two ice cubes, dog chains, brass knucks. I caught that. A mirror. What? And you fucking kiss me. Boy, what is this kind Wait, of what challenge? The fuck did you just the say? Fuck did you just what say the fuck me? did you just what say to me? What the fuck did you just what say to me? Did what the fuck did you say to me? Hey. Yeah? I didn't realize you felt the same way. Why'd you, I told you to raise that right hand. I know. I never said to wipe that ass. You kept on asking, but it wasn't to wipe that ass. What did you want me to do with the right hand? Touch my left cheek. Not your right cheek. Touch my left cheek. Oh, you want me to touch? Wait, like, I wanted to. It's unsanitary, but it's romantic. I'll do it. The fact that there's no fucking stall door. <laughs> yeah, we've been looking at each other taking shits this entire time. Fucking, it's romantic. Right? I've been eyeing you for since the seventh grade. We fucking caught him. <laughs> what? Oh shit! And scene. That was crazy. I knew that we were gonna be bike riders. I knew that we were gonna be bike riders somehow. I didn't know we were gonna be a poopy butt, uh, romantic lover bike riders. Holy sheesh! Happy Pride Month. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, dude, that was lovely. This was a great conversation. It I knew was it was gonna fun. be a good conversation. Thank it's you, always brother. a nice change of pace when it's uh, I, like I said, I love interviewing new, new folks and new talent, new creatives, but like to have an old homie on and just us talk about random our emotions and yeah. what we love and uh just random shit yeah that's it's what the pleasure bro about. thank you for having me per usual thank you for taking pictures of me when, and of course whenever thank i you. ask type of stuff yeah i there's i i i trust trust you with my life oh yeah. shit thank you yeah you, you you make me look real good all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's saying a lot that means a lot on a real note dude you're really you're the best at it. In my eyes, you're the best. Thank you. You're the best at it, both in terms of the actual uh, product that comes out of it and the way that you navigate. Yeah. I surround myself with craft. people that inspire me. So a lot of it comes from others as well. So mm -hmm. it's not just me. It's we're a fucking tribe. Yeah, we're a tribe. Jabberwockies. <laughs> hey. Hey. Do the chest thing? Do you do I don't it? know if I can do that. Yeah, you are but, doing no, but, it. But I'm over here like you. You just like yeah. See, I can't. It's not it. good. My, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It, no, they sag a bit. <laughs> <laughs> see, there you go. You fucking what's it called? Uh, self detrimental. Yeah, self yeah, come on. That's that's my fucking mo. It's my it's my brand. Yeah. It's my brand, dude. I yeah. just like I'm not gonna be funny unless I make fun of myself, dude. It makes me feel comfortable when you make fun of yourself. So thank you. Yeah, dude. If yeah. your friend's like <laughs> being self detrimental, check in on him. Sick. So. Um, baddies, thank you very much for listening to this episode. Before we get out of here, Chris, can you look into the barrel of your camera? Uh, and just plug yourself, just tell people where they could find you, what they have to look forward to, and if they want to book you for some portraits. Because there's a lot of creatives that listen to this podcast. If what's up? Uh, what's okay? What's up, creatives? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Christopher Perry.ccf, personal work and fun work and work work at Classic City Films for work work and fun work. Uh, that's it. And you guys have a fucking just be kind to your neighbors and fucking be kind to your friends and families. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love how serious you are about <laughs> plugging yourself. Those I hope people hit you up. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing, uh leave the listeners, leave the baddies with a piece of advice, a phrase, a word, a saying, something they could go about their day with that reminds them that it can't be that bad. Oh fuck. All right. Let me really actually think on that. I'll leave it with a photography standpoint. Collect memories, cherish memories, and create memories. <laughs> so I walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to be real serious about it. And I was like, you're listening to Just make time. Just memories. Enjoy the fact that you can even fucking obtain memories in your brain. Like, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Love you, dude. Love you, too. Thanks for doing this. Baddies, you guys know where to find me. You guys know where to find the podcast because you're already here. See you next time. Peace. Love you. Bye.